Okay, hey everybody, it's been a while, it's been a while. Uh, this is episode four of the Moses podcast. Um, we've got some exciting stuff going on this week, May 12th and 13th. We have the Musicians of San Antonio Symphony Concerts uh, performing um, uh, 7.30 p.m., by the way, at First Baptist Church of San Antonio, and we're performing uh, Beethoven's Seventh Symphony and the Mozart Clarinet Concerto starring Ilya Shaterenberg, uh, our principal clarinetist, and uh, that should be really cool. And our former music director for about over a decade, Sebastian Lang-Lessing, will be conducting that concert. So I thought this week would be a good opportunity to sit down with Sebastian and talk a bit about this strike and um, this this whole predicament that we find ourselves in and, and perhaps solutions on how to get out of it. So um, I'm not going to set this... Uh, I'm not going to set this up too much. Um, uh, we cover some interesting things, and it was an interesting conversation. I will just say, um, for all information, for anything uh, Musicians of San Antonio Symphony, MOSAS, go to mosas.org, mosas.org. That's all the information you're going to need to find about uh, news, upcoming concerts, and um, if you so choose, you can donate um, to help us out. And let us keep bringing music to you. So let's get to the conversation. Thanks, everybody. Okay. So we have a lot to talk about, obviously. I think so, yeah. Uh, why don't we start with a concert that you've come in town and also other reasons that you've come in town, right? That I just saw you at the Musical Bridges concert, which I was filming. Yeah. And the response also was pretty cool. Yeah, very that cool. That Suhail uh, uh, said, you know, Sebastian Lang Lesser and you got... It was the, Anya ex announced me. Uh, Anya, Anya, yeah. Rakowski. And a round of applause. Yeah. Which is great. I mean, it shows that, you know, there's a swath of people that are, you know, pretty excited about the symphony still. They know? are. And, and, and it's it's not going to go anywhere. I mean, this is what's happening right now. It might be a turning point, uh, a tipping point um, uh, that need to needed to happen. And 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 I hope a lot of people are going to wake up and all the bystanders are going to become active now because it's it's a point there yeah, where we have to turn the page you know it's uh, that yeah end. well and so this week uh, we've got concerts day after tomorrow i'm going to release this probably tonight so it's going to okay. be but uh, day well, after talk, tomorrow let's talk about the concert yeah sure let's talk about music <laughs> yeah <For> first <laughs> something yeah <laughs> music first music so that'd first. be our slogan san antonio Sim yeah um so yeah uh day after tomorrow we've got Ilya shaterenberg doing mozart clarinet concerto yeah i don't remember which one there's, There's only, only one. one. There's only one. I knew that. <laughs> a, a major. A major. Everything is an A. Even even the first piece is an A a, a minor and A major, A major. Maybe just well, triple A. We well, have a triple A rating. Okay. And then we've got Beethoven seven. No trombones. No, no trombones. And I, I please don't take it personally. Because when I when I talked to Brian about it and it wasn't quite sure how many strings we get, they had a hard trouble finding, you know, especially double basses and cellos. So I thought, you know, if I'm if I'm short on those, you are the biggest enemy <laughs> in terms of volume. You know, it's very hard then to compete. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, not that you can't play soft, but it, it it requires a certain lushness. And and actually, let's face it, it's also the message that they wanted to send into the community. We don't want a reduced orchestra where 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 you have a string section that sounds ridiculous, uh, and you play Star Wars with with three, ch three cellos and two violas, you know, uh, mm -hmm. that was, so we, we didn't want to go that way. And that's why I think a classical program uh, is right. Also because Beethoven seven was in the program that I was supposed to conduct this uh, week yeah. at the Tobin. And um, so, but well designed, yes. well designed. And so I think um, it has been already canceled during the pandemic. It was in my, my last season. Now it was shifted over to this one. So I think it, it had to happen now. Um, Beethoven had a very, bad birthday year but you know what my theory is about that i think that was it uh, why why does beethoven's birthday 2020 was silent it was a silent celebration well that was his his message and his deafness you know so he turned deaf he silenced himself on 2020 his music was not performed it's not true because I did Fidelio in Korea. So oh. did, did the whole speech on no. TPR and then <laughs> then then he told he, he, then he said I, are you here? are you there are you there? I gave a whole and then you lost it all. 
So now you're going to have to read. <laughs> yeah, well, it's always good for once. But, but um, So, yeah, this, this program, um, I mean, it's also honoring Ukraine. It's showing support for Ukrainian artists. It's showing support, uh, moral support. That's all we can do. With Obviously, music. Ilya, our principal clarinet, is from Ukraine originally. Yeah. And then he's playing a, a piece um, written by a, a Ukrainian composer as well, right? Miroslav Skorik. Well, yeah, it's, it's at the beginning of the uh, of the of the concert. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a melody. You know this typical typical Central European joy of suffering and <laughs> melancholy, and that's the most soothing. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful piece. Uh, simple in its structure, but very strong in it, in its message. That's why the music is always so good. Yeah. Of the Rush Shostakovich is my favorite. And Prokofiev. There was very exactly. odd stuff going on. The two opposites in a way, you know. The two opposites in a way. Uh, and but but the two greats uh, of Russian uh, 20th century music. Right? So we should also reiterate, I'll say in a forward, but so you've been in San Antonio for over a decade as the principal music director. Yeah. Um, so right around 2020 which is kind of the odd year when COVID started, but you were already scheduled to leave by that point. And so our last... That was my last uh, season. So it was anticlimactic, obviously, for you and for everyone else, yeah. ending in March, yeah. uh, when you were supposed to come back in, in probably, what, May or June? Yeah. Um, and then we did some virtual stuff, so thank you for that. That was great that you participated in that. And, and, um, and now we have this strike, which brings us to now. Mm -hmm. um, and so your title uh, was uh, music director emeritus, something to that effect. Yeah. Which I thought was just a, a, a ceremonial title. It's an honorary an title. An honorary title, yeah. but it does uh, carry with it uh, the ability to hire you back uh, and bring you in as a... I mean, th that ability never goes away anyway. I mean... No, it never does. <laughs> I think it's, it, it's, it's like a courtesy thing, but um, and I guess not that we need to, to speak about all, all the ugly things, but it, it was all in the press about all this, mm -hmm. about uh, removing your title because... Because you, uh, you well, it. you can actually. That doesn't work. Actually, I don't think the title can be removed or was removed because the title is not a co contractual thing. I think the title is an honor, honorary title. It, 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 it honors someone who has a certain legacy or created a certain legacy with an organization, and you can, you can call it, you know, conductor, uh, music director emeritus, or a, or music director laureate, or what, whatever you want to call it. Um, I, I don't think that that this is even possible to take away or justify it at the at the slightest uh, well, it seems strange to me because it was uh by our uh, the ceo Corey Howard. he said it's about the optics or something like that that they want to communicate to the public that they're united or uh that oh. was on that um what was the, it klrn interview show and that they posted a clip on i mean um, talking of communicating to the audience i mean i got a message today from the soloist who was supposed to play next week you know that he got a that he got a message that the season is canceled you know he's coming from italy he needs a visa he needs to book a flight you know it's impossible actually to assume that someone doesn't plan a ahead um when you already know that you're gonna i mean it was clear that the concerts were canceled because they cannot happen. It seems strange. And even if, if some, by some miracle that they salvage a season, we got a contract. Obviously, the musicians of San Antonio concerts would be immediately canceled. And then you would resume your contractual obligation uh, with the actual San Antonio Symphony. So it seems strange to me, like practically, but they said it would, they, were, they were reading things. It, the whole thing seems silly to me. Well, it's, uh, it's semantics. Let's put it that way. It's semantics has nothing to do. It's also fishy because they actually hired two conductors to replace me months ahead of time in december yeah in, in december and do that you, was why do you think that do you think that's because you were speaking out in the press yes, on our course. behalf yeah. of course yeah they didn't like it and they was were just waiting for the moment to to strike <laughs> um and uh well it that was that was probably the last chance but you know let's face it um, it's not about me or Corey. Nobody's interested in that anyway. And I agree. I, I, even though this stuff gets out in the press, it's not, I don't feel it's important. I don't think people need to focus on, I just want to, they want to know when's the music going to be. No, it That's is it. important because it, 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 it shows what this whole actually 
where the disconnect starts. Mm. Um, first of all, the San Antonio Symphony is the musicians of the San Antonio Symphony are the symphony. No one else is the symphony. They are the symphony. Nobody would ever deny that. Um, so there starts already the total disconnect. When you when uh, when you're supposed to not, I'm not supposed to conduct another ensemble, of course, in the same uh, in the same region within the same time frame. That goes because it's a competition to ticket sales. Um, this is not a competition uh, at all because one would only happen if the other one doesn't happen. So that's semantics, but the but the disconnect is 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 this against each other uh, uh, thinking that that there is the is a war that need to be fought, um, while the obligation is really to find a way to come to the table, and 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 find a solution and go go back on stage ASAP. And I think what Moses is doing is keeping the audience. Um, interested in keeping the music alive and that is the most important thing you're doing the san antonio symphony society an enormous favor and everybody understands that the symphony league supports it financially you know uh, the friends so who is against whom here you know I, I don't get it you you cannot by doing this you alienate your donors the symphony league is a big part of our donor group very important very, very important group. And they've been very supportive in the Mosas concert, very supportive. And what audience is coming to the Mosas concert? You know, it, it, it is the same audience that buys the ticket for the San Antonio Symphony, plus a, a lot of new people, which is also great. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's, uh, you had said something that um, uh, resounded with me um, about uh, solidarity in general. Um, so the, the Symphony Society is, is, is in their minds, I would imagine, and I've, I've explored this in a few podcasts we did before about, uh, I liken it to if, I mean, all, all of our board members are probably business people or, you know, or, or, or in, in around that sector, right? And I, I think of this as they're, they have a product that perhaps was around at eight bucks or maybe 10 bucks, right? And they want to get it down to five because they think that's more sustainable. And in order to do that, you have to reduce the quality temporarily, right? Almost by half, but whatever percentage that would be. And they're saying, well, then, once we've proven we can be uh, sustainable and responsible to our donors or whoever, uh, then we're going to expand from there. But the customers that are buying this new $5 product, I believe, are going to know it. They're going to know that. I mean, it's like saying that, well, they won't notice that we're using cheaper materials and they're just, it'll, it'll still sell, but they're not investing in marketing and, and development. And I mean, let's go back, uh, you know, so the 10 years that you've been here. Yeah. Uh, and, and after having immense conversations with many musicians about, you know, the issues, but obviously you're coming from, uh, you know, you, you were in Australia. Mm -hmm. They have state funding there for state funding right, yeah. in Tasmania. You were, you were in France, obviously, um, now in Korea, I imagine that yeah. the states... I mean, it's, a, it's a, the National Opera, so it's a government fund. Yeah, it's, it's actually a government organization. So obviously, you know, in America, we're very dependent on donorship, and I get that. And it seems to me the problem that's always been here is that they've failed to reach out to more donors. Their, their development staff, in the time you've been here, I would imagine, was only one person. Right? Am well, right? It, it, Maybe it is two one. People? It's one, well. It depends. You know, it's, it was one person and the grand writer, and, and 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 you can outsource a lot. You know, you can. You know, but 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 it's not enough. Uh, you know, of course, the bigger the, the that department is, the bigger better are your chances of of de development. The, the fundamental problem, and I think where 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 things are um, are uh, told, where wrong story is told, because I I I've been through all types of budgets you know i think when i started we were at 5.5 million and we went up um to close to 9 million at the highest point then went back down a little bit and maybe maybe into the high seven uh, early eight million ranges um when it comes to the shortfall though it was always the same no matter what the budget was it was always the five hundred thousand dollar mark that that, and yes, we did a lot of emergency fundraising. 
uh, what he quotes on the, on the on the symphony page. I've been I've been called to come back from from Europe in the summer and have a meeting and and have a luncheon and we have all big people there uh, on the table do a presentation. We raced in very in a in a in a luncheon we raised six hundred seven hundred thousand um, dollars and yet yeah, call it emergency. But it's what you have to do. I mean, actually, fundraising is always emergency. The problem why it's always emergency with the San Antonio Symphony is that the payroll is not guaranteed by a by an endowment or a fund or trust. It's just capital that you have. You have to raise payroll every single month, and very often, very well-meaning board members who left the board. Um, unfortunately, um, basically kicked in to make payroll at the end. Um, and we have to thank those people. That's another thing. Don't bash those people now and say it was their failure that we are in this situation. Not at all. Uh, what we need to solve is the issue that payroll is never in danger. And then you can build on this. You know, these $4 million in, 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 in salary cost, you know, need to be there and then you raise on top whether you they are there as a capital whether they are there in an endowment in a trust fund or in a contribution that is secured over a long-term plan doesn't really matter but the minute psychologically you see the minute you have that threat of raising payroll on a monthly basis you're basically paralyzed doing anything that leads to growth and and whenever ever I come up with a with a with a new initiative, let it be the Baroque series. I I don't know if you were already there. Just after. Yeah, and and or I I, lo- I wanted to launch something at, at, at you know at, at Haven for Hope with uh, Voices for Hope chorus, you know, a chorus with with um, homeless people and you know ha- launching that, creating a, a buzz and a concert at the Tobin. All of these things were loved by the board, but the minute. It got in the way. Even even the smallest thing cannot happen because we are constantly short. Um, so ideas that would open up new doors were put aside for too long. And that, what, what that do you, yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, no. What do you feel would change this chain of well, we don't have the money, so we can't invest in our organization. Therefore, we don't have the organization to uh, try to secure more money. I, I, it seems like they're they're always in this cycle, and they've always often been. And how do you? How do you break this cycle? Is it a mentality? Obviously, a mentality change, and someone willing to be scrappy and and, and make relationships. I guess. I <laughs> Look, um, I don't, uh, and I say that again. I don't think it's 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 constant failures, uh, failure of the board or the management um, uh, that led to this. This is this is not the issue. Um, and the number one thing that needs to be um, protected is the is the brand of the symphony and its reputation of artistic excellence i think that is something that we created in these 10 years together um that we had uh, we gave concerts that were way above our pay grade and we got that feedback from soloists guest conductors um my managers they were just blown away by the quality of playing and that is something that you don't play around with it's, there's only one solution to it, um, securing payroll, whether this is to direct involvement of the city and the county by securing part of that payroll or by a trust fund that independently funds payroll uh, or by a capital that is given to us for, let's say, five years that secures us then built on that. I think it's a, it has to be a mix of different things maybe at the end of the day. Um, but that needs to be number one. There is no other miracle uh, because once you, if, if that is not in place, you cannot grow um, and you, can, you always struggle. You will struggle with a $4.5 million budget. You will because it's not a sexy product to sell and your, your donors will dissipate. I agree. I mean, we talked about this in our actually very first podcast with Marty, mm. our new uh, uh, bassoonist and that's the thing. You, you now have a $5 product, not almost an $8 to $10 product. Million. And, and, and it's really not even in... 
that those terms are not correct even as you said we we far outplayed uh, outperformed our uh, pay grade i mean i remember talking to i think it was danny or some other people when when they auditioned for this orchestra okay so let's see this orchestra that pays you know 30 or 35 bass and they're like wow this is fantastic so uh, the fact that they would consider just to to save a small amount of money uh, to, I would say, drastically reduce the product's quality and also the cohesiveness of the band itself, right? You can't even, you're saying that you can't even afford a full complement for a score to perform something. You have to, I, I mean, it's, I, it's insane to me that, 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 that they're looking there to, to be responsible. And, and it, it's obviously in, in sensing people because they're saying, well, they're evil and this and that. It's really not that. They think that they're, it's what you see. I've, you know, I've got to sub in a lot of other orchestras over the last few months. And, uh, you know, other orchestras that have been on strike, too. Mm. And, and their boards and managers, you know, thought that they were making the hard decisions that th these are the right, the correct things to do. And this is the new wave of the future. To a smaller, leaner orchestra does more pops, this and that. And, and it turns out they were incorrect. Uh, so, I, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, the, the first plan, I've seen them all, you know. I've seen also the modifications on this plan. The first plan was terrible because it was built on seniority and title chair. So, so you end up as the, the only trombone. You, you have a horn section that is two people and you end up with having a bunch of cellos but much fewer violas. And, and, and so it's a totally disbalanced and, and with big holes in it. So it, dysfunctional, totally dysfunctional. So meaning, let's face it, if you don't have two colleagues, there's no repertoire for you. The pieces with one trombone it's it is not a big repertoire choice and those pieces are probably not the most popular in the repertoire so you had a core that you cannot even perform with so you so you're not even saving money because you have to get in people and they what they don't what they, they, they have advisors that come from the east coast or wherever they come from where they have a completely different infrastructure when it comes to to local musicians we are here so far away, away from um, big music institutions or where, where's a big market for other musicians that we, we, we cannot draw from local musicians to, to support a model like that. You will end up paying more to subs than to your own musicians because you at the end have to pay for travel. I mean, look at what, how much... They probably you, wouldn't actually. I would imagine. Well, then nobody will come. I mean, it's very yeah. simple. It's, it's just... Un, unrealistic even if the if there is a model somewhere but i tell you what when these models are also a huge artistic compromise because the more you play together as a group the better it will sound i mean it's not a secret i mean you know it in a trombone section is such a fragile uh, entity you know and you you feel it when somebody you know new comes in it can be sometimes refreshing but it always takes time to settle uh, and to find that unique sound that blend together in a horn section, it's super crucial. And we had with Jeff Garza, somebody who was really able to form that horn section. So it, you cannot build an orchestra overnight and with pickup. Uh, it just doesn't work. And it's so strange that to me, San Antonio Symphony seems like it was always at the starting line as in a full-time group. I mean, for growth. Mm. It, it, because it, it, if, if you're starting from another setup, you know, where it's not full time rehearsing in, in different times a day, but it's rehearsing during the day. So people are coming here, committing themselves, you know, out of school or, or whenever they win this job in order to keep that. That's the other thing. Retention in, in order mm -hmm. for us to grow, to retain players that are going off to, to groups that make 60, 70 K a year. Right. And, you know, the ability to keep those players, if we were able to grow, um, and, and this is just obviously completely antithetical to that. I mean, you're, you're not, again, you're not, we're not going to grow from a 50 person compliment. It would, it would be so, it would take years, decades probably, because they would never get out. It would, it would be like digging yourself further in the hole. I, I said, I mean, I said, okay, so I said to a board member, so what do, what do you want? You want to, you want to send St. Paul Chamber Orchestra? Well, then you have to pay, you, you need a different type of player. You need players. You have you have to pay seventy thousand, eighty thousand dollars because you need a different type of player because you're playing in a repertoire where every single one is basically a title share quality 
person also is a very different repertoire um, that is not even for our audience. I don't think I don't think you will fill the Tobin Center with a cycle of Hay early Haydn symphonies as much as I love them, but but forget about Pops concerts with with a chamber orchestra. The, all of this it just doesn't work. But, I mean, I I I I was music director of an orchestra that was actually small, the Tasmanian Symphony. Um, we had forty seven core players, but believe it or not, a full trombone section, including a tuba and a harp but also a full horn section, so double wins. But I have to say, that eight first violins, you know, and we were recording Schumann symphonies and with that, it, 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 is, it was possible because Tasmania had an amazing tradition in string, uh, especially violin teaching, and there was a teacher where everybody went, and it was the best school if you play the, uh, studied the violin. So we were able, despite the fact that it was small and, and, and the pay wasn't great, to keep a lot of players because it's also the most beautiful part on, on earth. But it's a different concept. It's a, it's a very, very different concept of orchestra. And that's something you also need to build. So uh, reducing, at the end of the day, you won't, you won't save money because you cannot do the repertoire that you need to do. Um, yeah, it, it, it simply doesn't work. But I'm very proud of the fact, actually, that we are a stepping stone orchestra, and that's great. We had a lot of advantages that attracted musicians to come here. Instead of going to other places that paid a little bit more, the, the advantage for us was we didn't have too many weeks. We, our weekly salary was not great, but kind of okay, Kind of okay when the, right. when, the, when the benefit package was going with it. But the other advantage, I think, and attraction was that with 14 classics, we played a lot of great repertoire. So, so people could, could come and play a lot of great repertoire and, and benefit from that. The level of artists that came was very high. So for young musicians, it was a great stepping stone. You, you still have the time to prepare for other auditions. And then after a couple of years leave, and I mean, I'm always the happiest person on earth when I realize that the people we hire actually now, you know, yeah. the trombones are a fantastic example. I mean, so many. There is basically every, I mean, there is almost no orchestra in the United States or the top orchestras that doesn't have a trombone player who passed through here. For yeah, a passed year through here. And that is, yeah. that is an amazing tradition. <laughs> So that, is. That, that, that is good. I mean, I, I wouldn't want to change that. In a way, um, and we just had another one, Derek, just yeah. won Phoenix. Good for him. Um, but I mean, you know, having a destination orchestra probably would be better, I would imagine. <laughs> well, well it, it, it can be both, you know, it can be both. I mean, because San Antonio is an attractive city to live in. Um, of course, the pay needs to race. I think that is, that is totally, totally important. And, and also doable, you know. Uh, for me, the, what, what, what should be a musician paid? It's very simple. It should be not less than the average salary of a school teacher in San Antonio, so the, which is 59000 right now. If we made 59000 in San Antonio, I'd say that's a positive direction. So I brought this argument to a board member and said, just 59000 a school teacher works about 19 hours a week of teaching. You know, that doesn't mean he only works 19 hours. Um, a symphony musician performs and rehearses 22.5 hours. That doesn't mean that he only prepares, he needs to prepare as well. So it's, it's very equivalent. Second is the degree that a musician has is probably much higher because the study is much longer um, in a certain way. It's very comparable. It's also always in a time frame of 40 40 weeks a year. And out of these 40 weeks, you actually work only effectively 30, 35 or something, 30, something like that. So it's, it's the same thing. Um, I think when you started, the orchestra was up to 39. Yeah. Or somewhere around there, right? So now that's the other question. How do you make these 39 weeks work so that, they, that it's actually efficient work to do? Um, I think... Um, uh, for that, we need a healthy ballet, or, uh, and we need a healthy opera company. 
uh, that does more than four performances a year. Um, that was also a big thing is that a lot more performances of that. Yeah. I was just talking to Lauren about yeah. that, but, um, about more opportunity uh, in this town, uh, you know, 20 years ago and, and even before. Yeah. So, so I mean, uh, uh, you need, so you need these other organizations to pitch in, but I think, I think there are other solutions, I think, of hybrid ways of, of, of making the use of the musicians efficient and, and impactful for the community. Um, and I think uh, that's the educational level. You know, one of the legacies of the San Antonio Symphony is the creation of the YPCs that Max Ryder created from day one in 1939, he started started it. The 40s, he had established uh, YPCs way before Bernstein was even picking up his <laughs> stick, you know, and and his concerts uh, started. But he had this enormous vision of, of of education, and it's a legacy that that made you know that that rests with a lot of resonates with a lot of uh, people who grew up he- here. And the symphony is a big part of that upbringing. Uh, that's a legacy we don't want to destroy. And I think that's a legacy we can build on and that will also find funders. Um, it, we need to sell it right. The problem is we, we, we have done probably up to 38% of when I actually, in, in, in my time, we probably 42% already of thir- around the 40% mark of all our activity, rehearsals and performances was educational. Which is quite high for most it's, orchestras, it's right? It's enormously high. I mean, good luck with that with any of the top five orchestras. They- I was just having that conversation with someone like, oh, you didn't do all that many children's concerts. I'm like, I think our ratio was much higher than most orchestras. We, the- we, we, we did was- a lot of them. Um, let's not forget the open dress rehearsals. Let's not forget all the residencies at all the schools, the tours. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of concerts, and they are all non-ticketed events, so there's no ticket revenue for that. So we were actually able to finance all of this through our classics. You know, the classics actually paid for that. They also paid for the pops, by the way. Um, so there is a huge potential with that. Um, that You'd it- have to find an endowment. An endowment just or somebody to support just the education series, and that there because you go. There's part that of the is season. a big, big hole in the budget. The the you know we we the fourteen weeks of classics basically pay for themselves. Why? That's our biggest ticket sale. That's where the subscriptions are. Not in the pops. It's mm-hmm. in the in the classics, and that's where the donors are. We don't have individual pops donors. Very few. Very few. Um, most are uh, classic stones. So, uh, so you finance all of this with uh, uh, with the classics. So we need to find people who actually pay for the actual cost of the education part. Um, the buses and all of that that is, that is other costs, but but it's also a big department. I mean, it's the assistant or associate conductor. It's Jeremy Brummel does an amazing job in that department. It's a huge department in San Antonio, and it is. It is actually iconic, I think, and the biggest legacy. Um, we need to sell it as, a, as, as, as one of our really big assets. I would say making more relationships, but also beefing up our staff. That's something that, I mean, in my opinion, what do you think is, if you had, if you had absolute power over our previous development department, how many people <laughs> would you like to have in there? Look, uh, with people, it's not how many. Uh, it's it's about quality. Mm-hmm. Um, um, you need the right people at the right place. I mean, I have seen small groups doing magic, and I've seen... With just th- one person? Uh, well, n- that is not enough, because um, you need to divide... You need to divide certain... You know, you need to divide corpor- corporate, doning, uh, don- uh, corporate donation... Uh, individual don- high-level donors, then the big bulk of, of, of individual donors, and then grant writing, um, and then um, foundations, and all of this. this it's, it requires very different tasks, you know? I mean, obviously, that we, everyone agrees that there has always been a, a problem 
with, with, we've only ever been, you know, keep, treading water, keeping our head just barely above water for decades, right? I, I, we, I, I don't want to pitch into that. Well, I'm just saying that, that we, uh, there has been some struggle. We all agree at that, and they think that their solution is to cut, obviously, but that, that, that doesn't have to be. I mean, there's, you have to have a, a scrappy sort of, in, in, you know, a lot of ingenuity and, and a lot of shared vision oh. for growth. And I think that's, yeah. that's so much what I want to sell because it's so positive that we can all get together with a shared vision exactly. and make it happen. Not, not this, well, let's reduce the quality of our product. Certainly, no, no, again, no business person would agree because the, the people will know and it's going to be so much harder uh, to move forward with that model. Um, the economic impact is, is the thing that, that I always stress because I thought that would resonate with uh, uh, business people. The, the economic impact that each individual musician brings into the community goes way beyond what the symphony pays you in salary. You know that. Um, the, you know, there is this Richard Florida study that, uh, from um, oh, the quote that he uh, um, uh, he goes from another um, source, uh, but this it uses the, ter- the San Antonio Symphony as an example uh, that the economic economic impact of the symphony was two hundred and twenty two million dollars in a year of economic impact. So now, how do you measure economic impact? It's a lot of factors. Um, it's, it's, so if we have a hundred employees with the symphony, um, we have at least another hundred that are in a close relation where the work for the symphony makes up a big portion of their work. And then there's at least another hundred that, that have us as a client indirectly. And then, and then of course, restaurants, transportation, hotel, um, the, economic impact that every individual musician has by being you're an entrepreneur you're not just but just you know uh, the principal trombone but on top of it you're a creative person you, you do a lot of things and this is a creative class that you need to keep in san antonio by by reducing your position we would lose somebody who's probably the only one capable of doing what you're doing right now. I mean, we talked about musical bridges. Uh, they, des- they desperately need you, uh, and so do many other performing arts organizations. So it, it is not just the, the symphony itself and what we do on stage at the Tobin Center. It's so much more. So it's very short-sighted for people to think, oh, let's not invest, because we all know $1 into an arts organization brings back eight, ten, twelve dollars into the into the economy. So please what do you get that return? So it, it becomes a destination also for businesses. Uh, you know, uh, someone was t- telling me about what business leader was it they um, where they were talking about moving to San Antonio and that their one of their first questions was, does it have a symphony? Does it have a symphony? Does it have an opera company? It's like, you know, it's the the five star rating that you get for a city is very equivalent to hotels. You know, what do you need for a five-star hotel? You need to have a fit, fitness center, swimming pool, um, you know, in-room dining, um, valet parking, you know, you know, certain things you need to have. Otherwise, you're not a five-star hotel, you know. Uh, if you want a five-star city, you need to have... You know, it's indicative of health yeah. also and culture and, and, you know, it's interesting that they'd want to gut that. It's short-sightedness that is... Um, symptomatic and so the, the only way is turning the cycle I, I didn't want to say it that way but this is a there is a cartel of underfunding and no giving in san antonio that set the bar for corporate or foundation or even individual donning relatively low in comparison to our sister cities houston and dallas not relatively low sometimes ridiculously low do you think that there are new companies and interests that aren't part of Because I hear all these kind of, I don't want to say conspiratorial, but that, that all the funders, that there's some smoky, you know, room that they all decide that, well, we're not going to give this much. And, and maybe there's some truth to that, but uh, I don't know how we're going to sell. I'm trying to circumvent that. It seems like there's got to no. be a way to, to 
and not only get, you know get those donors, but other ones that that are new and and that it just be you know it, creative. I, I, no, no conspiracy here. Um, let's not let's not n nurture this. I don't think there's anybody of that side behind the current plan that backs it up. I don't think so. There might be people who say, oh, you know, you get your finances right and we'll give you money. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but do you think that that's what's happening is that, and I don't want to get into hearsay, but all the theories are, well, people are telling the symphony, well, you know, take, get, your, get your house in order and then we'll give you money. And is getting your house in order uh, shrinking it to five million? And then that's, that's their, their thought. And, and that's what I've been thinking. Um, I, like, no, is that no, really what they're thinking here? I, when I came, there was a feasibility study about that, that, that actually first the study wasn't done really well. But that was like, that study was already old when I came. So uh, look, and that was my first concert. So 12 years, 13 years ago, we're talking 2009, it was an old study. So that study said that, that, that all San Antonio can raise at that point is, is, is for, for a symphony would be in the $5 million range. That study is not worth the paper that it's written on because how can they even know? Yeah, it's 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 very hard. If if you find if you know that you have already invested so much brain power that you could raise that money, you know, <laughs> yeah, uh, in the time uh, it took to do the study, you could have found. Let's talk. You know, yeah, let's talk million. about advisors. The money that has been spent on outside counsel. I mean, and not in-house staff, and the, it, it, uh, is is mind blowing. Do you suppose that they would? Uh, say that it's because they can't, they feel they can't find the talent locally or something. For what? I don't know. I'm just trying to figure out why you don't, we that don't, was the We move. don't find talent locally on in any job. It's a national search. I mean, it's for, uh, I'm not local. I'm I mean, you don't either. want to hire local conductors to become music director. I mean, <laughs> give, give me a break. I mean, I've heard. Yes, they, you can uh, find a marketing director from out of state. You're absolutely right. I mean, you, you are not from here. No, no. I mean, I mean it, it's a, it's a, it's a, Total coincidence that Stephanie Key <laughs> came back to her hometown, you know, mm -hmm. as a, as a principal clarinet. It, it, that's a total um, total coincidence, but that never happens normally. It was very alarming. I remember participating in like a marketing committee, and all I w it seemed like I was talking to was was these outside advisors, but not a lot of in house staff. And it was it, it, I just wanted to see more investment in our organization, you know, but I, cause like you said, the amount of money that they're spending on this stuff, I, I don't know. It's and people are willing to, I mean, I don't want to say any names, but, but those people come for, come for a nice yearly salary of a music director and give an advice for four weeks, you know, <laughs> that yeah. without conducting a single concert, but with advice that is usually out of books they wrote, 30 years ago. Um, the problem is with fundraising and development. We, we listen to a lot of people, but, but it's the same as in technology. I think it's outdated. <laughs> you know, the, the, the knowledge of the 80s on the 90s is not worth a penny anymore um, because it, the, the world has shifted. So the, Americ the American f model of financing an arts organization is this 30 Three third model of a third ticket sales, a third endowment, and a third fundraising. Yeah. So that's why I say if you have a third endowment in the big orchestras that covers the salary of the musicians, you're not in danger there. The third of ticket sales, I, I would say good luck with that in the future. I mean, we are coming out of the pandemic. And that third is in danger because it's exorbitantly high in comparison to other countries in the world. Do you think that the Berlin Philharmonic can make 30% of their budget with ticket sales? Despite the fact that they are sold out every night? No, it's impossible. I mean, in, in, I think in Europe, uh, I don't want to say the Berlin Philharmonic, that's an extreme example, but, but any major organization has probably 10 to 15% of their budget comes from ticket sales. Most cases, it's probably even below 10. And let's be prepared for that. I mean... I know you were advocating when you were here for increased support from the city, and I know that they already give somewhere in 
the neighborhood of like three hundred over three hundred thousand dollars already. But do you uh, may, I, may just to yeah. some history lesson? Uh, Nelson, when Nelson Wolf was mayor in San Antonio in the late eighties, nineties, early nineties, the city gave five hundred thousand dollars to the symphony. In in today's money, that's one point eight million. Well, with yeah. the infl- inf- infl- inflation rate, yeah. it's going to be three million. Yeah, um, but and the ticker is still going. But moving, yes. yeah, and 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 that was the same during Henry Cisneros' time. So in my time, the city gave, and it's not the city; it's the hotel motel tax. Um, it's so it's not a line item in the city, but the symphony was a line item in the city budget. That's yes, that's been discussed a lot. That that. Was it previously the hotel? Yeah, it tax? was. It was. So that's that's been brought up to me a lot, and then some people refute it and say they can't do that, and other people say oh. it's. I don't. I don't know. But that, just to be clear, yeah, there was a hotel tax that we were making use of, but I think more can be done for the city to invest in in its institutions. I mean, I was when I when like San Antonio Civic. I went with um, with my dear colleague from uh, from Sama, uh, from the San Antonio Museum of Art. We went together to Ivy Tell at the time and said, look. This is what other cities have done during the crisis, still post-2008 financial crisis. How did Detroit save the symphony? How did Cleveland save the symphony? How did, what did St. Louis do? All these cities had the same problem. Um, there's a syntax on seg- cigarettes. You know, you smoke a cigarette, you, you give... A, you, I like you, that, a you, sin. You, yes. you give 15 cents to... I mean, we, if we did the margarita tax, you know... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in San Antonio, Ooh, you, yeah. you, I mean, it's, 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 I mean, it's a lot. <laughs> Do you lot. want a margarita? I can make you one. I, I, I will love one, but. I but, won't tax you either. No, but, but you, you see what I mean? There's a lot of creative things you can do to get that money. And, and always tax is such a, such a burden. I can tell you one thing. When I moved to Monte Vista, my property tax was already high. It's doubled by now. In 10 years, it has doubled. Okay. Um, what am I paying for? For school district that I cannot use, um, for yeah, for police and all of that, nothing really has changed. The only thing that has changed, and that created a higher property value, is the vicinity to the arts district. Let me call it the arts district, the the Tobin Center. The property prices in that region went up because of that, but it needs a content, you know, so. I want to finance the arts because I choose to live in Monte Vista because I want access to the arts. I'd be happy that $200 of my exorbitantly high property tax would go into the arts. Nobody would feel it. Nobody would complain. But this is, you know, whenever I mention that, or millage and development. But we have, we have... Uh, for example, every building you bu- uh, build, you have to have a piece of art, you know, after, if, if it goes beyond a certain, you know. So uh, 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 sometimes you feel ve- find very obscure statues in front of buildings that don't seem not to belong there <laughs> because it is, it's a requirement um, to invest into art, when, you know, which is great in some cases. This is great. present in this city, you're saying? Oh, it's, it's, it's yeah. actually everywhere. Mm-hmm. But... You can do the same. Why not in human capital? Why does it have to be you know, a statue? Why not development tax into the arts, performing arts fund? It could be a performing arts fund. I mean, we opened San Pedro Creek, $180 million. I said, you know, at the time when that was opened, we, we played for it with an opera that was created. And in, I think the San Pedro Creek is a fantastic project. Nothing against it. Will it boost the economy like the San Antonio Symphony does? I don't. I doubt it. But um, if we had an arts fund of 180 million dollars, San Antonio would be one of the most vibrant mm-hmm. arts communities in the United States. You would be a game changer in uh, in 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 the arts industry, and 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 actually that would also embrace the diversity. Um, it also the small organizations benefit from us. We always had these battles between, you know, oh, we are the biggest employer and we get the most money from the city, by the way, which was $645,000 when Ivy uh, was, uh, was, was mayor and now we had three hundred and forty. dollars So I've seen it, you know, uh, I've seen it come down a lot. There's also quite a bit of COVID relief money, I, perhaps still unallocated. I mean, these 20 
1.2 billion infrastructure. What is infrastructure if not also brains? I mean, uh, brick and mortar is one thing, but I think it, the human capital to invest is a much more... A building costs money when it's empty. i give you an example, the Almeida Theater. We had an advisor who we paid a nice fee to come in. He came actually three times to San Antonio to give the same advice over three decades or two and a half decades and we repeated, um, repeated that. Um, I mean, if, if it first didn't turn, wasn't the turnaround, why all of a sudden it would be a turnaround? But that turnaround um, person was also hired to be a fundraiser for the Almeida Theater. Then that was a conflict of interest, so no fundraising on our side. Now the Almeida Theater is stalled. The money is in there, but it's half finished. I'm saying to myself, maybe that's a nice rehearsal venue for us and an office building and maybe something we can use because it, that, that's definitely an empty building that just costs money and has no purpose so far, you know. Um, again, money well spent um, is not actually always happening in San Antonio. Um, so Also, you were talking about... Um paying for specific things like salary wages and things like this. If we could get a, a particular uh, a donation just for renting out the Tobin Center, which is, you know, quite a high fee, if that was also taken care of. And I mean, um, I mean, uh, Tommy Calvert said that to me. What? Why are you? I said, why are you? You, you're having, you're paying more than at the Majestic. Yeah, of course we paid more than that. But moving, in, we all thought that moving into the Tobin Center would solve all our problems. Everybody thought that. Everybody on board was thinking it because we would think, oh, like the... This big, Kauf beautiful place. Yeah. Kaufman Center, Kansas City. You know, that auction, you know, was struggling before. All of a sudden, San Diego didn't get a new hall, but, but a similar thing. Um, now we have an outdoor venue, but whenever a new home was built, um, there was a... Nashville was a good example for that too. Um, the difference is... The Kaufmans also gave an endowment to the orchestra, not, not just the building, and the building is theirs to use. You know, it's a main difference. So I always say, you know, you went to the voters and asked them, do you want to give money to a performance, performing, art, for performing arts center, which is, the, which is supposed to be the home of our resident companies, uh, symphony, opera, ballet, um, and they said overwhelming, yes, I think it was 67%. That is $100 million of taxpayer money. And $50 million was the property that the city gave. And then the rest was raised by, by private uh, donors. I think those numbers are pretty right. I mean, don't quote me on that. I'm, I'm just a music director. <laughs> but um, what was... Um, I said, actually, you know, why not going to the voter and ask for them if they want to contribute to an arts fund, if, if we can use te uh, taxpayer money for an arts fund, for a performing arts fund. It's doable. Ask the voters. It's very doable. And we already have you know, numerous council members that are very much and in I support talk to, of the symphony. And I Peter Sakai, if you see me, beyond that, this, is the, this could create a legacy you know, for a lot of people. I have to thank Nelson Wolf. I mean, Nelson Wolf was, was, was really a pillar in in all the struggles we had. But as I'm telling you, when he was mayor, he supported the symphony already with a hefty, um, hefty check of 500,000 at the time, you know. Um, and as a, as a county judge, he basically was our single largest, the, the county was our single largest contributor. Uh, um, but, but then that goes away alongside with the corporate funding. Of course the symphony is in, is in very bad shape and actually that's not even the fault of of that administration or board and i knew to, between you and me when your contract was signed three years ago that it had no backing financially mm -hmm. there was no because i knew how much money was missing <laughs> you know i knew what the money was missing from the city from the county from from our donors and from the corporate donations so there was a haul of 1.5 million dollars that didn't have any replacement 
So, yes, I knew that. Everybody knew that who was on the board. Um, and then came the pandemic, and there was a silver lining. Yeah, there's more money to be To prevent a that. bankruptcy happening. So, yes, you are aware of the problem. Uh, I think Mary Allen is totally aware of that financial problem. But the solution, I think, we don't agree on. The solution can only be um, to find this money other, uh, elsewhere. And um, I think what, what's going to end up happening is I'm not sure if we have to wait to, to bring our parties together to, to, to make these relationships with the city. I, I'm thinking that, it, I mean, we can, we've already making strides to do, to do that now. And I don't know if they're doing it on the management side where they're trying to Make the, I mean, obviously, it's a tumultuous time to try to reach out to organizations. Um, not, I, look, so I, it could be confusing to, to donors. But I have been doing this also from Korea. Don't, uh, believe me, I've been in, in Zoom meetings. I was always told, oh, wait, wait, we have a, we have a plan. <laughs> um, uh, we're putting together a group of people. I think there are a lot of people in town who want to turn this around. And I think you have a secret little. It's little. not a big secret. I mean, <laughs> but it's 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 a it's a kind. I mean, you had a meeting uh, first yesterday with a couple of people, and this and, is exciting. And we are going. Well, I'm, don't get excited. I mean, <laughs> I, I won't. I got excited so many times here. You know, <laughs> my excitement level is is leveled. Believe you know, me, I'm measured. I'm I'm, I'm 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 a more pragmatic now. So I, I talk 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 is one thing, um, but I but I think this is a possibility for a turnaround. Um, I think there's, you know, there's this new uh, county judge election happening. Um, to make that an agenda, and let's not forget the and the turnout in these elections is very low. I mean, it's, what is it? I mean, it's a laughable number of people who vote, even for the mayor's race. It wasn't like it's like ninety thousand. I mean, votes or something like that. And so, like a couple of thousand votes are. A huge deal um, in your in the race, but and the but our audience votes probably ninety five percent of them vote. The musicians vote probably a hundred percent, especially when you know that something is at stake for you. So we are an important, influential part here. You know, we are we are very important. We have a big, loud voice. So let's. Um, Let's mobilize that and, 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 and make our elected officials aware of it. I think this is not a, not a threat, but I think putting the arts on the agenda can be actually helping them gain leverage. I think that's probably the most poignant thing we could, we could focus on is, is that opportunity and also just reaching out to more donors and restoring a public trust You know, after all of this. I mean, it's... it's I, all of the press is so. I mean, I mean, I, it's been yeah. very positive on 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 on, for, on our behalf. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, people don't really want to hear about that. Is they want to hear about a positive, you know, orchestra that's you know changing their mental states when they go to see a concert for exactly. the better. Exactly. No, don't don't you know? bash, don't bash each, you know, don't bash anybody involved. Look, everybody who gives money to an arts organization is a friend. Even if that comes with a condition, it, it, they are all friends. I mean, uh, let's not bash anybody who gave money in the past. To I think be very careful with that. We need to be very careful with that. It's uh, no conspiracy theory. You know, at the end of the day, it's 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 giving. The problem, I think, uh, the changing world for for the arts is that philanthropy is dying out, and it's replaced by charity. And we are competing with so many char charitable organizations that become more and more important in, and, 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 you know, with the inflation and with the pandemic, even more so. So that will be a very hard battle to fight if, if nothing fu changes fundamentally. So the one thing that needs to change is, is probably more public support. There is, there is no uh, other solution other than you know, some very rich individual writing that hundred million dollar check, but um, but also our product needs to change a little bit. 
The product actually doesn't need to change that much. We talked about it in the beginning. We are already an educational institution. We are sure. not entertainment for the rich. We are an educational in institution and we need to be seen as, as such. Um, and that makes us a much more appealing uh, institution to give. Because I know the generational shift in a lot of these uh, big um, corporations or family-owned corporations, they have different focus and we need to appeal to their um, ideals. I mean, the haven for hope thing that I mentioned um, was a pe very passionate thing for me, you know, but not completely selfless. I mean, I love the idea. I think it's a fabulous idea because you change the life of people by doing this, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I also know that this is Bill Greehy's brainchild. Haven for Hope is one of his legacies and it's a fantastic thing. It's one of the best things that, that any single, you know, uh, individual donor really created. This is ph phenomenal. And I was, I didn't even know it exists. I was there with you and we did a, at yeah. least one chamber thing yeah. there. Yeah, so I, I yeah. It was amazing. Well, you have one side that's kind of a recreational center yeah. for anybody to come, and then the other side is uh, kind of subsidized housing, yeah. free, I would imagine. Yeah. And you just have to it's perhaps a... go through a breathalyzer and all this, and then yeah. they give you a place to stay. They set you up with a job, and we played for them, and it was lovely. And uh, I mean, the more stuff we can do like that, I mean, it's super important. But 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 it needs to monetize at some point. You know, of it, course, it, it, yeah. it needs to be. You know, it needs. To, we we cannot do this for free without support out there expecting. For it, for you sure. know, and I think this is. This is this is where we're not selling each other. Each we don't sell us ourselves at the right level. We, whenever we went asking for money, it was way too low. We sometimes played down how much money we are down. That was the biggest mistake. Um, I think the worst mistake you can make in fundraising is pretending, oh, your budget is actually not as much in trouble as it really is. So you're hiding, and 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 and, and that. Lose, loses more credibility than being honest and say, look, we are down that much and it's a, it's a, 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 we need to restore this. So don't ask for 500,000 when you need 2.5 million. Or even more. Yeah. It seems like, yeah, like you say, we're, they've always been afraid to ask and to reach out like, as if it's, it's some sort of selfish thing, but it's not. It's, it's connected to our community. I was talking with Mary Ellen about this. Like we're you know, we're going around with our instrument in one hand and our hand in the other and say, oh, this, it's not that at all. I mean, we're all interconnected in this. Yeah. And it, it's, it's, but you need pride. Uh, you, you, you need a certain pride. You cannot ask as a beggar if you come from this, this beaten down position. We can only ask with pride if we have a product that is world class, excellent, unique, iconic, irreplaceable. And not 50 people in the core. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter how many people it is. If you get me a 50 people, but, but, but then it's a different orchestra that doesn't fit the need of San Antonio. I mean, look, Ophia's chamber orchestra is, is less than that, but, but it's a different thing. It, it's not, you will never play a Pops concert. Forget about Star Wars, you know. But they don't understand that. That's the, that's the other problem. I mean, that's the other problem. Yeah, I mean, we at least need to maintain the numbers we had because... Again, it was we were at the starting line, and we're ready to, to you know continue and to, to go backwards is just not an option, in my opinion. I think so. it, I think also then the the week. I mean, there needs to be there needs to be some flexibility, probably. I think what we need to look into from the musician side is because what happened over the years in all these negotiations was pay cut after pay. Cut. I mean, in my time, and we always. CEO, all the higher paid individuals in the organization took the same percentage pay cut at the, as the musicians. Is that actually the case for the current administration? Uh, no, it's not. But I guess, I guess that's the problem, right? Over time that so many concessions were made but, by but, the but, but what I'm saying is exactly. And whenever a concession would make, the, the union had no other weapon than putting another restriction in the CBA that actually... It's not even in your interest fun fundamentally, but but you need some negotiation <laughs> points. You know, I get that. Sure. It's a method, but our CBA uh, got over the years kind. You know, it's it has a lot of useless stuff in it that needs to be cleared out, and 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 I think most people would agree to that. But it requires stable pay, 
stable pay that not just for three seasons but for, that you have a an outlook that for 10 years will be will be good and we you know that is the trajectory yes, they're going continuing to continuing to do this <laughs> yeah it's a trajectory there then yeah. you can actually get a lot of i think we need to be more flexible i don't think that the season planning that we see now um, or that we have been accustomed to is the season planning of the future i think we need to have weeks where we can do whatever and decide that actually relatively late in the game um, and be flexible we have to be flexible to split the orchestra different ways um, be more stylistically flexible from jazz to new music from from, uh, from like a ballet company i mean they need to do contemporary dance with 12 people and then they need to do swan lake with with 56 uh, even the pa paris opera uh, ballet does this so there needs to be a little bit more flexibility and openness to different genres and, and, and different formations. That, that's why the Baroque series to me was very dear. Uh, I uh, think I, what, that, that was Brandenburg. We did the Brandenburg. Right? We did, but it was also the mission that we always accuse we are not fulfilling coming to the Latino community. I mean, this is the Latino community. San Fernando is the main church uh, for the Latino com community, you know? Um, and they go to mass and after that they stay for the concert. Uh, so it was a totally different audience. It was a, a, a it was a fantastic audience. I mean, yeah, more creativity would be wonderful. I suppose we need a contract first. If you know. uh, no, but the thing is, don't come. It's not what's lacking is vision uh, of the artistic side. I mean, we we have done really came up with a lot of ideas. What's that's not what's like. It's what's lacking is a base funding that is robust. So. There needs to be four, five million in the bank when you start fundraising. So what do you say to a board Every member year. that says easier said than done because they're obviously, you know, stuck in their ways right now? Well, it's, 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 it's often the wrong approach, you know, in approaching the people in the wrong way. Um, look, I conduct in Korea. Um, uh, it's a government-funded system, but yet we have also actually a development department and we also have uh, big donations from individual donors. Um, one is the, uh, the CEO, self mont billionaire, the richest man in Korea, who built Celtrion, a uh, biomedic company. We got all the all our PCR and our test equipment always for free because we need to do a lot of tests. Um, but, but he sponsored Samsung and, you know, the production that I did. And, and um, that's the richest guy in Korea. His net worth is $1.5 billion. In this town, we have five people whose net worth is higher than that. Come on. Yeah, make it happen. <laughs> yeah, there is something as civic duty, and it, 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 and and sometimes it's not. Oh, I like I don't like classical music, or I don't like to read, or I don't like. I just like to watch the rodeo. It, that doesn't count. What you like, you sit, and that's why you know other countries tax, <laughs> and and it's decided proportionally, um, which in a certain way is fairer. I think that if the, the people that say that, if they gave it a chance, they probably would like it. Actually. Oh no, they would. I mean, I mean, uh, look. Charles Bart loves education. He's, that's his that's his passion. I, I remember I met him when we went we at this concert for Jacques Parzin. We we sponsored the Berlioz concert, and, and he, we we had a fantastic talk about about different education systems. Uh, we were talking about China. I was about to go to Beijing to conduct uh, Rosenkavalier, and we talked about a lot of things. He's with the right ear, and and selling the orchestra as we are as we are and not selling our problem. We're always selling our problem. Our problem is not, not really an interesting thing to sell. Agreed. And, that's, uh, and my answer to that question is, is essentially what we've been saying is have a shared vision. When people say easier said than done, the money isn't there. Have a shared vision, have some goals and, and, and make it happen. I think that's uh, somehow we've always uh, never quite got, like I said, got off the starting line. And, and I think we can. And, and I think there's going to be some big things coming down the pike soon, I hope. It, it sounds like you're already making some, oh, I, I, some I, I, progress. We are, we are making, we actually, a, a lot of people are very passionate about it. Um, I hope so. You know, when I posted a joke on Facebook, I said, uh, uh, Elon Musk buy, uh, buys San Antonio Symphony, breaking news, no? Um, <laughs> look, it is a 
not a joke, actually. It could happen. It, 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 who, for example, I also said, you know, um, who actually, you know, when I saw an article about um, um, uh, Thomas J. Henry, uh, who approached this guy? I mean, it's a fantastic marketing for his law firm um, if, if he would give a substantial amount of money to the symphony, you know, um, if you need to clean up, if, if you need to get an image booster, that is a great one, um, especially in a certain clientele. Uh, but again, our branding needs to be preserved. What's happening right now is that our branding is actually damaged by all of this. So, uh, right, but really, I think that can change very quickly. It can. Well, damage is always uh, well, quicker done than repairing. Yes. Well, we I know. suppose, but I mean, once the word gets out that we're all united and that we're all going to help each other, you know, with this goal. But, but why not reaching out to Elon Musk? Why not reaching out to to him and say, "Well, we want to create a community token for the San Antonio Symphony as a as a new way of of fundraising and subscription models and, and loyalty programs. So a staking model with a community token, something like that is also not like out a of a crypto the, based thing. Of course. Yeah. I mean, um, um, uh, that's the future, you know? Um, yes, it will leave a lot of our old donors behind, but, but of our, a lot of our younger audiences would be excited about it. You know, we have to go different routes, you know, mm. that's why development is not just one. There needs to be one person, and, and marketing is not just one. You need to have a social media person. You need to have, you know, you need to have totally different qualities of uh, people. I had spoken about this, and it seemed like they believed, and this was just before COVID mm -hmm. kicked in, and they, they seemed to believe that, well, we've done studies, and we don't find that social media really moves the needle for subscription buyers and this and that. I was like, I think you're missing the point here. It's a very cheap way to promote yourself. The investment of time can, I mean, I mean, and money is very small for the, the value that we, you know, I think it's seeing value in things that aren't always going to move the needle in the, in the metrics that you've been using previously, because obviously it's all that's important. I think nowadays is social media. So, and, and our, and our donor base is aging, right? So the people that, I, you know, I found it, I founded a company on the internet, you know, my virtual masterclass um, teaching company. I mean, it's all about social media. How can I reach the world if I don't use social media? I mean, in this, the, I had an article in the San Antonio Express News. It was wonderful, but it was only wonderful because I could post it on social media. I mean, the, the print news or the subscription to it has no value to me unless I can post it on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, uh, Facebook. I mean, uh, oh, Facebook is already, you know, you need to go much further, you know, um, and depending on where you go, um, you need to WeChat and, 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 and different YouTube channels and, and stuff. If you don't use that, we don't have a YouTube channel for the San Antonio Symphony. How, how ridiculous is that? Uh, uh, we do. Uh, do we have uh, one? I don't know. It's not very well trafficked if we do. I, I would say also one last thing is it business relationships, making partnerships, um, you know, even if it's something small, you know, I, uh, I was excited. There's a place that we used to go drink after concerts called mm. Ro Roadmap Brewery. Yeah. And just before COVID, we were talking with a the bartender there. I said, you know, we're looking to make partnerships. We, we, and I know you actually made a, a wine with Becker Vineyards at some point, I think. I, that was, I mean, I have to say, <laughs> I have to give kudos to Jack Fishman. You know, he was actually, from a marketing perspective, he was was actually kind of a genius. You know, we had all these mugs, the SLL era begins, I still... Have these mics? I love them. I mean, but he 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 launched my start really well. I got this this wine from Becker. You know, it's a Cabernet Sauvignon. It has my picture on it. You, you, you create a certain buzz, you know, and 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 then we did the festivals. You know, the festivals were excellent. Why were they excellent? Uh, I mean, it, because it was my idea. No, it, um, <laughs> because it we embraced the whole community. We had all these partner organizations that, that were going with us. And, and we justified that we need to take the biggest portion out of the Hotel Malta tax because we are the center of the festivals. And we had like 25 different arts organizations partnering with us. Um, of course, that was ad abandoned by the next board because they think it's not their idea, so it can't be a good one. This is another mistake. I well, think, I, I was know. surprised to see that a lot of Symphony Budget's uh, corporate donation is only you know, 10, 20, 30% max, but we could, that doesn't mean that we'd have to adhere to that at all. You know, I mean, well, maybe I'm wrong, but I, I, uh, 
and I, but it, 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 you know, anything and everything is possible here. There, there's, I feel like there's just a, a if it's not possible in, in Texas, it's not possible. There's a lot of growth. Let's, yeah, let's, I mean, look, look I mean, I drove through your neighborhood here. That that is a neighborhood that didn't exist two yeah. years ago. Yeah. Um. Uh, the Tobin is so. Please, um, let's. Uh, we should. I said that in one of my first board meetings. I did make my board chair very happy about it. But 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 I think, yeah, we have a five hundred thousand dollar. We're facing a five hundred thousand dollar deficit. Um. And then let's say, and then everything. And then I said something. I said, oh, you know, I don't. I don't think that's right. I think we don't have a five hundred thousand dollar deficit. We have a two point five million dollar deficit because our budget should be at seven point five million, not at five million. Hmm. That's what I said. And yeah, oh, well, you don't don't say this, you know. But I was proven right because that we needed to drive to the seven to go over that cliff. We needed to get above the seven million to be actually an impactful organization. And that's where was our, our height. You know, there was a Beethoven festival at the Majestic, all sold out. You know, we played Beethoven nine three times, sold out uh, at the Majestic, which is much bigger than the, than the, um, than the Tobin, you know, it was like 700 seats more, 600 seats more. So, uh, you know, think bigger is, is, is the big uh, takeaway, I think. And, yeah. and, Absolutely. And, and, you know, the, this is all possible. That's the other thing. It's possible if, for us to come together and make these things happen. If you I want think. to attract big money, you have to have a big dream. With, with small, you don't get Elon Musk to get interested in an orchestra that has been shrunk from 72 to... If it, he, he won't give it... Bit, but if you say, we want to build the largest orchestra in the whole country <laughs> that has 12 clarinets, no, but, but, but something crazy, <laughs> um, interesting is for him something that opens. And, and he's not interested in cost cutting. I mean, until Tesla was profitable, how, lo how long did, did that take? You know, it was, it was he's setting a belief basically for, for the first decade. It's a belief system. And, that, and, and, and there's something to learn from that. I love that. It's, it's a belief system. Well, I've taken up a bunch of your time and I think we've covered yeah. a lot of important stuff. You're inspiring a partner to talk to. So well, yeah, right. we're going to start a regular weekly series. Um, and so everybody come out to the Mosas concert a day come, after tomorrow. Um, come out, cheer. Um, all, yeah. all of the dates are published on our social media. And, um, and, and also, you know, consider donating to the Mosas Performance Fund, which is one of the most important things I think they could do in, in keeping these concerts going. If we decide, you know, we're definitely looking at doing more. I don't see why we wouldn't. Um, so and I think you should, should keep doing who knows what's happening next season um, I mean there's no season announced there's no subscription sold actually if you don't sell your subscription in March you're basically doomed you know as a, a symphony hmm. because now uh, this, is, this is already bad yeah um, very bad actually um, so yeah you, we need to move yeah we need to move but we need to come together we need to shake it i mean th that's the great thing though about you know coming from from europe the great thing about america is dreaming big is possible you know you, you can become from the dishwasher to the billionaire is a is, is actually a path you can take in america much easier than in germany um and so we are the dishwashers of the symphony world <laughs> and uh, and we want to become we yeah. want to become the entrepreneurs of the symphony world. Let's put it that way. We can become an entrepreneurial orchestra that shakes up things in different directions. We have to modernize a little bit. I think we should. I always say we. Sorry, I'm not even part of the organization, but you will always be part of my my being. You know, um, so in spirit. It, yes. No, it's no, no, in action. Come on, in action. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm here now to make trouble. I'm. <laughs> <laughs> Should you start snapping on two and four as well? I'm no, I'm start making. A game. I, I, you need to make trouble, you know. But I don't want to shame people. No, that's not my interest. No, but make some trouble. Stir up some dirt. Get people. Wake up some people. You know. Get them riled up and excited to to be part of this. Yeah. And I'm. I, I want to say kudos to to you guys because you're not thinking about your salary in this strike. You're thinking about the organization. 
And you know that an organization that is not functional will never guarantee you any salary that you're promised to get. But it's, you could have cashed in at least a little bit of money by agreeing to something stupid that you don't believe in. And maybe some of you would have gone down that route, but you decided unanimously not to do that. And that is bravery that should be honored. That is something that somebody like Elon Musk would say, wow, these people have actually, they have guts. They, they have nothing, and yet they fight for an ideal. They believe in something. They believe in they quality. Are, they, yeah, and they believe in a vision. Um, they believe in, in the importance of the arts, you know. Um, and um, in a world where everything is about money, well, this is a very important thing. You know, you don't become a musician to become rich. Not even a conductor is a good job, you know, to be quite honest. You know, we, we keep a, lot, a big machine running and a lot of people eating from it. Um, at the end of the day, the, even the big check, paychecks become very small. But, but that's not why we do this, mm -hmm. well, you know. But that doesn't mean, that doesn't give the board the right to say, well, they already do what they love. Why even? But that's <laughs> Why pay them? that's yep. the mindset. Mm -hmm. um, no, they need to be paid well so they can do what they love even better and focus on it. So well said. Thank you so much, Sebastian, Thank for you, being Steve. here. This has been great. And like I said, everyone go out and see the concert. Excited, even though there's no trombone. <laughs> I'm a, I just can't, I don't care. Uh, <laughs> I'll be I'll be at the one in, in June, and well, really we have Beethoven to blame. Uh, symphony five and six, but not seven and eight, and then back trombone. And then back, back in, in nine. Back in nine. But always very sparse. Yeah, but it's really fun. You get to take out the alto trombone. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thank it's you. Been great. Thank you. Thank you.